Hello everybody, Anton is here and in this video I'll be talking about how I created this particular creature head. Not the body, because the body I've done actually quite a few years ago, but I was kind of bothered that body anatomy was pretty good, but the creature head was kind of bad. So I decided here that I'll use 3D code to update the head. I also did some sculpting on the kind of paws and a little bit of tweaking here and there and it did the rocks but it's not really included in this video I'll just skip through that it's all about this guy and how i approached it because three code gives you some interesting tools to do that like instancing of the head and instancing of the sculpts so let's just go and jump into it so here I start with the body of the old creature just input it in Actually, it was a ZBrush file, so I embedded it as OBJ. You can see it's about 2 million triangles. Uh, I was just embedded to uh, sculpt layer. And here I started to just delete stuff. And I decided to just melt the face down. And so this kind of blob. And then I just said that I'll just cut it out. I was trying to find a proper angle to cut it out, so and then I cut it out from the top. Right. So the great thing about 3D code is that you can instance objects, right? So while I have that head tilted in place, I can have this head untilted in a separate place. So I can just duplicate it, move across like I've just done it, and then, you know, sculpt it and see how it reflects on the body itself. And I really don't have anything in mind. So I'm like, okay, I'll just free sculpt it and let's see how it goes. So I, I wanted to have uh, obviously an open mouth creature, but really no design in mind. And, and I had some ideas that it's going to be some kind of, again, hairless creature, maybe a combination of a bat with <clears throat> with a rat, with the lion, with the hyena, and with the, later on with the shark. So it, it can combine all of it. Right now it looks like a, looks like a glove. <laughs> Like a token animal, like a, like the glove you put on in the hand, like oh hello, I'm Mickey Mickey Mike. Uh, one thing I always do, well, uh, my my favorite thing about creatures is the head. The thing is that the joints and like joint mechanics is fairly the same in humans or animals. Um, it's really hard to be creative about it in the way they move the joints, but you can really be creative about the heads. The heads are really different. And I've studied a lot of anatomy. I've studied a lot of, or like even like watched some documentaries on uh, animal autopsies, a lot of evolutional stuff, a lot of the stuff I've watched. Uh, you know, and end of the day, while kind of hands, uh, legs and hands kind of stay the same, uh, heads are always different. Uh, those really radically different. You can be really, really creative about the heads, about the placement of the features. And all of that. If you want to see a real kind of master a creature, I think the, in my opinion, the best creature designer uh, because he designs animals that I kind of enjoy that don't look like just all, all like scary monsters, but have some sense to them. Is there in my case, I think is Naval, Naval Page. And he's done some stuff for Avatar, and he's really, really cool in terms of how he designed the animals. And, he, and he's got some good understanding of his, oh, actually of his joints and musculature. Uh, better than I have. And he kind of manages to do a bit more creative. 
animals in general. One thing I like to do is like I like to play around with placement of nostrils, so nostrils can be really be put anywhere uh, on the model. If you think about Avatar, the nostrils there they didn't they didn't have nostrils on the head; they actually had nostrils on the clavicle bone. It's pretty cool, uh, interesting idea. Uh, just check out some of the the animals at the head um, between the neck and clavicle bone. They will have a nostril. No nostrils on the head. Right, so here you can see I've done, I've started to do the jaw, uh, the teeth, and I've just instanced it and moved it across to the body. And here I kind of pretty much figure out what I'm aiming at. I was fairly happy with this shape um, of the animal, of the head. If you look, if you look at this particular like dent uh, indentation, uh, it goes from the eyes down to to the ears, like this oval shape. This is more like, like a lizard type skull structure, more like a dinosaur. And uh, believe me, I spent a lot of time looking at dinosaur three D scans and. Um, like skulls and all that stuff, reconstruction, fossil reconstruction. At one point I was really trying to understand how the inner musculature of mouth works uh, on reptiles and mammals because it's different. And because the reptiles have muscles on the inside of the jaw while Mammals have on the outside. Right. So yeah, I was pretty happy with the nostril placement, with the eye placement. Um, I actually moved the eyes a bit further, a bit more in front later on. And generally, if you would be like, curious how do I compare to ZBrush, for example, I think end of the day, ZBrush is kind of better. Uh, and and it, it, there's not much sense for you to jump from ZBrush to 3D code. But I really like to experiment. I really like to test out new tools. And something really, really quick, I feel like 3D code is perfectly adequate. But if you're like as really used to ZBrush and you're like a ZBrush master, like sculpt, go into 3D code, just start sculpting and learn sculpting, it probably won't make my too much sense. But if you're just picking between two softwares and you, if you use it, a, a, if you use 3D code as a primary tool, then yeah, you can sculpt pr <clears throat> pretty well here as well. My probably biggest con uh, complaint here is just not as easy to jump between layers as you can, uh, between like subdivision layers as you can do in uh, ZBrush. You can, you can convert it into the proxy model and jump inside proxy and outside proxy. So you can drop it down from uh, 600,000 tr triangles like I have here down to like 20,000 triangles and move stuff around in that low poly version of this model and then go back and it will retain the history of the movements. But it's still a little bit strange way, like if, if you're used to this bottom to top approach when you go from like pretty much any other software's got, uh, you'll find it hard to adapt to having this approach from top to bottom, creating a proxy model and going down. Um, on the level, so here you can see I'm moving the eyes. So again, trying to get a bit more uh, alien look, and there is nothing really preventing to have the eyes to be moved a bit into in front. Oh, 
Well, to be frank, there are a few like things that I've done here that you probably won't encounter in the nature that much. Like if so, you can see this to be a predator, right? And the predator usually have this binary vision with his eyes looking in front. And if you think about the dogs, they I had got this really large nose in front of it that kind of obscures the field of vision. Uh, while for wild predators like lions, panthers, hyenas, uh, dogs, um, they have a better field of view. Uh, like they have more of a, they have eyes in front that creates an overlapping vision, more like a 3D vision like we humans uh, have. While mammals that are not predators like horses, sheep, giraffe, elephant, they have their eyes placed on the sides of the uh, skull. Uh, they so the the way they can see more they can see pretty much like 360 of the environment but they do not have that kind of 3d vision that we have so if you want to have, make more of a like grass eating mammal then you would try to place your your pretty much you can place your eyes or whatever but if you're trying to make a predator, which is kind of makes sense as a predator, you're trying to give him a bit more of a field of, uh, a bit more of a predator side. So placing and positioning the eyes that they can look in front. Though the problem is that when you try to make it to look <clears throat> too natural, like like in real life, like you can see on our planet, it starts to look like too much like an uh, animal you could find in our planet. And you know, I normally I'm not really happy when somebody would say uh, and look at this guy and say, "Oh, it looks like a looks like a lion," and I'm like, "Damn, that's like it's the best thing if you design something and people just don't have a reference in mind to, to call it." to call out some kind of animal that it looks like. Means to have done a really good job as a creature artist and created a, a new a new species. And here though I've made this pretty scary renders <laughs> uh front renders that's on the YouTube and uh, some of the presentation renders. I wasn't really aiming to make a monster. I was still trying to make something that makes sense and and I'm not really a uh, creature from hell. Though in the right angle of view, uh, it can look pretty scary. And uh, generally I'm thinking about the background of this creature and the original idea is still kind of there, slow, like a uh, um, underground cave hunter, a night hunter eating some small um, animals like rats, whatever they have here on this planet. Planet. And because I'm pretty lazy about the fur, I don't really want to do any fur. I want. I'm keeping just this uh, regular skin. You can see I'm doing these teeth and teeth. I was thinking about the teeth having, you know, instead of multiple teeth to have one just like a teeth line, just entirely possible. There's nothing uh, f about it that's preventing you to have just one big tooth across the whole jaw. And uh, earlier animals, like going like 400 million years ago, um, they actually had this big tooth plates instead of the teeth, multiple teeth. Well, I guess multiple teeth eventually evolutionary are way better than having one long plate. Uh, but if you want to be a bit more creative about creature design, you can always you know design something like one long plate of teeth. In the end, I. Th 
I kind of uh, decided to go for individual big teeth. I'm not sure if there was a if, which. I'm not sure which one is better, to be honest. I think I could have stayed with them. Just like that. All right, so I'm doing the inner mouse part. So I decided to have it as a separate model, just so head doesn't interfere too much. And okay, so here I jumped a little bit, quite a bit, uh, maybe 40 minutes or an hour. And so I created the inner mouse and now I'm starting to do the eyes. And you can see that I created a new layer for the eyelids because <clears throat> area around the eyes is really, I mean, doing the eyes is really tricky and doing it right. So I just wanted to to model something. And I knew that if I just model eyelids separately and then combine them with the model itself, then I'll get, a, it'll be way easier to deal with them and will be faster. And you get a fairly decent result. So I'm trying to get this more of an angry look. And also, you can see I've created a ton, which I kind of skipped through. Uh, the tan, I pretty much bought it, uh, borrowed the tan from a hyena. Uh, I was looking at hyena photos. Oh, like, to be honest, the line photos as well, they kind of have the same structure. I'm trying to figure out the, uh, the nose. And... I'd say the praise to a pinch brush inside 3D code, it's pretty cool. Like it's really cool. And the, and the pinch brush in voxel mode is different from the surface mode. So pinch brush in voxel mode is kind of useless, but pinch brush in surface mode is really, really nice. Um, <clears throat> like I feel it's better than the pinch brush inside ZBrush. Like I wouldn't normally create those type of wrinkles using a pinch brush inside ZBrush. I would do a slash brush and then I would pinch it and or move it or mask certain areas, push it out and then do all that stuff. Pinch here is really quite cool. So I wasn't planning to have this head to be at a close-up level. Uh, and I really never even rendered it at close-up. So that's why I, I didn't really de over-detail it that much. Well, you can see here, I decided that the face is way too white and just pushed it together. And it's kind of important to think about it as well. Like, how are you going to present this, is it going to be a model that you really want to show every little bit of it or just a general concept as um, as an animal? So for me, it's just a general generic concept. I don't really want to spend too much time on every, on polishing every wrinkle, every, every pore on the face. So the thing I do about wrinkles and and I see people do this mistake a lot. When they do one wrinkle that just one long wrinkle that just forever, it just lasts forever. And then with another wrinkle, it goes around the whole head. The thing is, that you, want, you always want to break the wrinkle up. You do a line, then you stop and move your brush a little bit, a little bit and move another line. So you can see like there's a wrinkle that goes from the top of the mouse to the eye 
and we can't see it right now, but you'll see it there. And it breaks up, and then with another wrinkle, it continues on the same moment. So it looks like one wrinkle, but it actually consists of a couple. And that's uh, really a key to get those stuff look uh, realistic. And you can see I've cycled through different materials, so I was always trying, always like to experiment with different looks. So at the one point, I really like this blue material. That was really cool. But after I rendered a diff few different versions inside Keyshot, I found that, well, just the standard uh, human ski material looks kind of nice and kind of freaky. And I decided to go with the standard human scheme. I would say I haven't found a good way of dealing with the teeth inside 3D code. It's... I feel like I have to model it, honestly, to, have, to get the best result. One thing that I was kind of getting here was really annoying that I have the sandwich effect where I have, you know, the top of the lip, then uh, the gums, then the teeth, and the teeth and the gums are of the same thickness. This is something that I will be treating later on. So I'm trying to make this teeth to like have this dent when they meet the gums. Right here, you can see I've skipped, skipped through a little bit. So this is where I decided to do the teeth separately in separate bits. And also you can see I've applied a noise modifier to the tan. And I just did a standard noise modifier um, in surface mode, nothing fancy at all. One thing I didn't show in this particular video, I wasn't I also was detailing the body a little bit. I was adding some wrinkles on the paws and I added stones, but because this is really all concentrated around the head, I didn't want to get you guys distracted by uh, by paws and by rocks. And I also didn't want to make this video too long. I mean, it's, it's already, I think, way too long, but why not? Also, a fairly easy way of doing some kind of intelligent looking alien beast is when you use the eyebrow structure from the human beings and apply it to the eyes. So here it's fairly human um, eye structure. And if you make if you want to make it this animal really dumb, you like won't have any kind of eyebrows. You'll just um, try to make it kind of flat and bulging out like and then you'll have like a fairly stupid cow look all right here the noise was a bit too active so i decided to smooth the noise on the tongue and here i decided to add some uh, uh, scars on the on the body I have the symmetry off, so obviously we want to add these details in non-symmetrical mode. So when I was doing the nose, I was thinking about the shark, essentially. I didn't really have any kind of even reference about of the sharks, just a general idea of how it would look. Here I'm just trying to add that gums 
gum structure around the well gums. And just preparing the head itself. So because my previous head was kind of a bit misplaced in terms of like gums were misplaced with the teeth, I, here I decided to do a proper clean instancing with the whole structure named correctly. And you can see that I have the group called head instance 000, or original head. It's got the teeth layer, the tongue layer, the inner mouth layer. And then I try to fit the neck. All right here, you can see I've added the rocks and I've started to modify the teeth. Here I'm just evaluating the whole model overall. And I've recorded a few poses, like camera angles. You can do it by control arrow up, and then you can rotate them around around them. And at this point, I also actually dropped it into the key shot and looked at what I needed to do before the final render. I really like to do that, you know, like when I'm 70% in or 80% in, I always, uh, drop the model into a key shot and just check it out. And I, I think I felt like I, my wrinkles, they, uh, like they didn't have enough volume. I just didn't have, really have enough wrinkles at all. I, we kind of want to be really careful about adding a lot of wrinkles because if you add way too many, well, then you're essentially making the guy look look really old. Like if he had so many scars that it's all beaten up, like like it's like fifty years old or something. You you don't really want to do that. You really want to be careful about areas of complexity and areas of rest. So here I've turned on the symmetry, and I really was now at the point where I needed to do. Started start to introduce a symmetry to the whole model. I didn't introduce th that much of a symmetry in general, but you know some of it. So I decided to do this kind of broken leap in the middle, which is quite a big part of the look. All right, you can see you can see I'm using pinch brush all over the place. So, I had a little super wrinkled front, right, just a few months ago. Then I decided that it was way too wrinkled. That's why I went back and uh, smoothed it out a bit. So here I'm trying to do the teeth. Uh, pinching here doesn't really work that like, great. You can you don't really get a nice even edge. Like So I really struggled with the teeth. I mean, it's always a struggle. In Zebra, she would struggle with them as well. So it's something that I, I feel like you kind of have to model really. So to get some top basic topology to flow, right? And then that topology will help you 
to do everything else. And you know, I haven't done any tests on how this mask is going to close and open. So they, it, it might be, I don't have really a perfect, I don't actually know how to call it, perfect fit between the teeth, upper, upper jaw and the lower jaw. But I, I did, I was thinking about it. I was thinking about how it's going to close. And I'm trying to match some teeth plates, but I wasn't trying too hard to do that. And again, I wasn't really doing a great job on the mouth interior because again, I was thinking that, okay, it's just going to be rendered, full body render, nothing too crazy. And the, obviously the inner mouse is going to be going to be just black, uh, with, uh, shadowed, and invisible to the eye. So again, breaking this, trying to break the symmetry in the teeth. And the gums. And trying different materials out of curiosity, like how would the like different look it's gonna look at. I've actually rendered it really white in the end in Kisha I rendered it way too white so I actually had to overpaint some of the teeth later on because they look really unnaturally white. The the tongue here I'm trying to pinch it. Generally this tongue to be honest looks a little bit too much like a human tongue. And a human tongue is fairly thick and short. Like uh, and if you look at Cat tans or tiger tans, they kind of broad and thin. So here I was kind of trying to achieve that look, but it's still like something in between of a human tan and an animal tan. And I'm trying to use a brush to get this pause on the on the tan. And I was, I, I, yeah, I was a little bit failing here. I was like, it wasn't it turned out to be a bit harder than I thought. I kind of really like this blue clay look, polymer material. And here you can see I've just combined the body with the head. So it's like a final, final, final uh, part of the process. And now no, um, it's no longer instanced. So I essentially can just delete my instance because it's no longer going to be reflected across. So he has started to draw the kind of because he's opening the mouse and he, when you open the mouse, even if you feel your if you touch your neck, you'll feel your like I don't I'm not sure this muscle layer that goes thin muscle layer that goes over your neck starts to tense. I haven't really done a great job about doing it. I just kind of indicated it. Here.
And yeah, it's all, even though using steady stroke, it's not really great. It's all like kind of jiggly. But again, this is, um, was just trying to get an indication of that and move on. And obviously, because the right side is bent and the left side is stretched to get a different type of bulge. So here, all the fingers are all pretty smooth, so I've done all the fingers. And I think it's uh, about, about ready to go. Yeah, so this is just inside the key shot. So I'm dropping the human material. I just mo slightly modified the hue and the tone of the material. Because I've tried like white and blue. It just, I didn't really look like, I didn't really like how it looked. Um, the gum is kind of pinkish, gums and the tongue. Uh, for the stones, I think I just used some random material as rough plastic. And it's all not textured, so I could have br brought more detail out of the sculpting details by having some curvature map on top, which I haven't done, uh, because I'm just lazy. So you can see I'm just using the some plastic on the rocks. I spent a fair amount of time just rendering all of it, uh, trying different angles, rendering at different times, you know, so probably I've done about 10 renders at one one hour each. Sometimes it'll be the same camera angle because I only had three camera angles and I just kept rendering and re-rendering. Re well, I mean, Kishit is great because you can manage the amount of resources it's taken so you can put it in a render and then... This actually, right now I'm just playing with the replicator trying to add a lot more stones. But the stones, and they're not really that amazing so they kind of don't look great on close up and so i decided that to not to do that in the end so i didn't have any rocks in the end so what i was saying like i've done a bunch of re renders and re-renders now each and because i can manage the amount of processes uh, a key shot is taken for any given moment uh, you can like have you can do some other stuff while you're rendering in key shot So yeah, just trying to see if I can do anything with these rocks, but really not, I couldn't. They were just not really dense enough. I mean, this this kind of looks all right, but from the top. From the top. Yeah, this is, okay, there was a close up on the face, which didn't look good. So I decided not to render it at all. Really, the environment maps, the HDR maps, they played a huge difference. Uh, they were making a huge difference in the look. So I had to test out a lot of lighting scenarios to to get the best um, outlook of it. And also, the way he should render subsurface material takes a while to get it 
rendered, so we have to wait. And here you can see I, I had the stones for the front end of, I actually decided to push the stones up to scale them up. And that was only for the front end. If you look at the other renders, they were actually, I was keeping the stones flat. It just, they look really thin for the front render and I didn't like it. And they're changing the focal lens to see how it looks. Definitely a huge effector. And yeah, this is really all about the key shot. So I do have a lot of other videos where I talk about how I post process this stuff. Well, essentially, you can see that my key shot render is quite different from the final view. And the final guy was. I'll just quickly open it. Was like this. And then I just decided to go for this kind of look. And really my kind of feeling about it was make it a bit more like graphic design piece, just adding more bits into this, making it a bit more unusual, you know, in terms of presentation. Also, if you know this game, Another World is a really pretty old game, like 20 years old. Uh, it's got this really interesting look, like, um, that kind of I wanted to pass on the mood of it. Well, it wasn't really a fan of this kind of guy, for example, if some people could think about it. I, I was really just th looking at this French-made game and you know, thinking about how I could get that feeling into my uh, concept. Not even the concept, but presentation. So if you look here, you have... I have managed to achieve this kind of interesting look of a poster, of an old poster uh, with some kind of fading of the edges and it looks like it's been printed, you know, on a particular type of paper, having that kind of um, edge. This is all done essentially by adding unsharp mask, which is pretty strong here. Then I also have this whole thing is slightly it's been pretty much blued and overlaid on top. So if I put the opacity at 100%, and this is essentially, this, this is the layer. And again, this is all a smart object. So if I go inside, then I jump into the original bit, and this is the original uh, guy. Well, and I can go even further down and jump into the original render, which is like that. So yeah, this is like my kind of structure for presentation. I do talk a lot about it in my other videos, so you can check them out as well. But essentially I use a lot of color lookups and some levels. Actually not that many for this guy, but you can see at the top, I was just testing out some of them. Again, this is something pretty interesting color coloring as well. And if I just save it, it will go and update everything in my final output image and this is how it's going to be a look updated so a bit over the top way too much contrast so this is why i didn't go for it but this is essentially my testing process i would just apply different color cups i had also this color cups here you know a whole bunch of them obviously they kill the image when they apply to many of them at the same time uh, and yeah, this is essentially the whole process and thank you guys for watching and see you in the next video.